good morning on this beautiful day as we uh, gather for worship. Um, we're going to come together and uh, before we begin our worship service, just have a few real brief announcements. So the first announcement, announcement is just about our summer worship schedule, which I think you're all getting used to. We're meeting at 930 now. Um, now, today was a little different. It was this is our first Sunday, but we didn't have Waffle Church because we're all together because of the baptism. But in July, when we come to that first Sunday, we will have Waffle Church and we'll have this service at the same time. So 930, continuing on through summer. And then the second Sunday of September, we're going to go to two worship services. The worship team is proposing 830 and 1030. But please talk to them. Give your feedback and comments about do you like 830 and 1030? Would you like to see the time shifted to something else? So... Um, the next one is you have uh, a little brown insert in here. This is family ministry team. And so I just encourage you to read through that and prayerfully consider how you can help support our families and children of the church and get involved. There's all sorts of great ways to do that. So just turn that in. Um, today, after worship, we're going to do a new member class. So even if you didn't sign up and you're thinking of joining, stop in. We'll be in the chapel area after worship having a conversation. So please do that. Next Sunday, um, after worship at 11, Audra and I are hosting a picnic over at the Parsonage. So we invite you to bring a lawn chair and a dish to pass, and we're going to be outside. So we did one of these in the fall, and everybody got to have a tour of the house. You still can see the house, but now we're going to be outside because we know it's going to be a beautiful day, right? Because why would it rain on the pastor's picnic, right? It wouldn't happen. So anyway, that's next Sunday. And then also church camp is coming up. Really soon in July, there's a display out there, so please consider how you want to be a part of that and sign up and do all that. Um, I'll just leave room. I also know that there's probably going to be an announcement about blood pressure, right? The blood pressure clinic is going on after worship today with our nurses. So stop into the library immediately after worship so we can do that. Um, were there any other announcements to make? Anything else? All right. Well, I do warmly welcome you and greet you, and I'm going to invite you to stand and do the same with your neighbors around the sanctuary. Let's stand. Let's greet one another. Let's share the peace of Christ. Good morning. <laughs> and then you saw we threw in, this is the day. invite you to join joyously as we sing this is the day we're going to sing it twice through Ta-da! 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. Okay, good morning and welcome to the worship of God. Please find the yellow sheet in your bulletin. You may write your name as well as any changes in your address. Uh, children also invited to write your name. Please share any prayer requests you may have on the back. Pass the sheets to the aisle, and the ushers will collect them there. We invite any guests to take the sheet to the Welcome Center, which is located straight out the sanctuary doors just before you get to the Fellowship Hall. After worship, you will receive a gift, as well as someone will be there to greet you and answer any questions you may have. Please stand as you join me to, in the call to worship as found on the screen. We gather centered in the promises of God, grounded in wonder and joy. We gather surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, moved by hope and heartfelt prayers. Let us pray. Loving God, open our ears to hear what you are saying to us this day. Open our eyes to see where Jesus' healing love is needed in our world. Open our hands to do your work and help where we are needed. Open our lips to bring comfort, joy, and laughter to all your people. Open our minds to hear new truths about how you work in our world and our lives. Open our hearts to love you, our neighbors, and ourselves as you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.
Thank you, Brian. I want to invite up uh, Milo and have him bring with him his parents and godparents. So come on up. For you, I invite you to take out your insert with the adorable baby <laughs> that is on the front cover. And I invite you to follow along as we go through our sacrament of baptism this morning. What a joyous, blessed event this is for us as a church family to welcome Milo into our midst. The sacrament of baptism symbolizes the love by which God reaches out to us, even when we are very young. We are here today to declare that God loves Milo and to offer ourselves as the instruments of that love in his life. Community. As a community of faith, we promise to hold Milo up in our prayers as we pledge our support to him. Our homes are his homes. Our resources are his resources. Our faith will be taught to him. We will teach him the joys of God's world as we surround him with love. We pray that we might fulfill our vows to you and to God. And our God prayer. I invite you to hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were open to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And so we have this example and this model that Jesus gives to us. For us to enter into the waters of baptisms, to be, to be claimed by God. And that is what we are witnessing this morning. Milo being claimed by God's grace and hope and love for a lifetime of growing in his faith as we, his church family, support him. So I invite you to join me in the thanksgiving over the water as we come to bless the water. We are a people of the water. Love like a rain shower awakens the sleeping seed within the soul and lures it to blossom. Love, like a wading pool, wading pool, inspires delight of children jumping, splashing, spraying each other, shivering with wet joy. Love, like a hot shower after a long day's work, cleanses us, reawakens us. Love, like little drops, drips from fingertips to forehead. Through baptism, the family of faith makes room for one more. Milo today is in a baptismal gown that's been handed down through the generations in his family. And so, boy, are you happy? Let's hope you stay that way. <laughs> I baptize you, Milo Forrest Carnett. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
God's blessing be with you always. Let us come to welcome Milo as we join in song. There's a little lullaby, it's on the, be on the screen, but it's also on the back of your uh, baptismal insert. Let us sing this as our way, as a church family, of welcoming Milo. This child is now received into the love and care of this community. See what love God has given us, that we should be called children of God, and we are. Almighty God, giver of life, you have called us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray for your child, Milo. Watch over him. Guide him as he grows in faith. Give him understanding and a quick concern for neighbors. Help him to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, who has baptized your child and servant and who is our risen Savior. God of grace, we pray for Milo's parents, Aaron and Shannon. Help them to know you, to love with your love, to teach your truth, and to tell the story of Jesus to this child, so that Milo may hear your word and know of your presence. Gracious God, giver of life, you have called us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray today for your blessing on Milo, that you will watch over him, guide him as he grows in faith, shares your love, and lives his life full of your peace and joy. Remind us of the promises of our own baptism and renew our trust in you. Make us strong to obey your will and serve you with joy through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let us welcome Milo our new brother in Christ. <laughs> hey, kids, come on up. It's time for the children's message. We'll see who we've got today. I think I might have this on the wrong ear. Okay, yeah, that's better. <laughs> Come on up. Good. Oh, maybe I should move over this way a little bit here. Oh, everybody looks pretty nice today. <laughs> Great. Um, the gospel lesson today is about Jesus' last meeting with his disciples before he went up to, to uh, heaven 
have a seat there, and he asked them to be witnesses. So, what is a witness? Okay, you know what a witness is. You've watched TV. What do you think a witness is? Okay, somebody who tells them what they saw, exactly. So here's one definition. For adults, a witness is someone who has knowledge relevant to an event or other matter of interest. Now, I think for some of the kids, that's not exactly a good explanation. So I have a story to tell you. And for my story, the idea here is, sometimes you might say to yourself, are you sure that's really what happened? Well, a witness can tell you maybe if that is really what happened. I brought a witness along for this story, and that witness is my phone. So phones are very good witnesses now for pictures and videos and stuff. Here's my story. I went to the Black Hills with my two sisters and my niece last week, and one of the things that we wanted to see is this. Okay, somebody said Mount Rushmore. You already, does this look familiar to a lot of you? You've been there? Yeah. Well, we wanted to see it. So we got to Keystone, Colorado. We pulled into our hotel Memorial Day evening and thought we are going to go right on up there because we were very close. When we got there, this is what we saw. <laughs> there's an avenue of flags, there's rain, there's fog, and there's kind of some fuzzy lights in the distance. You could not identify what was up there on that mountain. Okay, no big deal, right? We're just a few miles away. So the next day we get in our car, it's rainy, we've got some other things we can do. We get to around the corner, down the hill, and suddenly there's a reason why we can't go any farther. Do you want to guess what it is? A cliff? Actually, you're pretty close, yeah. A drop-off of some kind? Shall I show you the picture? Because they had had two feet of snow and all that melted, and then it rained for 24 hours. I have a blow up, but that's kind of what we saw. And I'll show you one that's a little bigger. Okay. So basically, what this is, is a road on one side and road on the other side. This is the only way in and out of the parking lot. And there's like a river instead of a little stream in between. The whole thing had washed out. We were trapped there. Okay, so that day we spent at the hotel playing Rummy Cube and reading. <laughs> There's a vacation day to remember. The next morning it was beautiful out. We went down to look and see if they had fixed things. Unfortunately, it looked just like before, only not quite as much water in there. Okay, so my niece and I decided, since there was like a little footbridge you could take, Mount Rushmore is only four miles away. And we had to decide, do we want to walk there? Because it's along a road without a sidewalk, and it is up a mountain to get there. What do you think happened? Yes. Do you think we did it? Okay, we have a no. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else? We have a yes. Okay. What do you think? Okay, we have a yes. We have some no's. Okay, luckily, I have my witness along. Here's my iPhone. Okay. So... That's my niece and myself, and if you look very carefully in the background, the presidents are there. We did walk all three or four miles or whatever it was to the top of the hill. We tried to hitchhike down, but nobody gave us a ride, so we walked all the way down also. Okay, so the two of us made it. When we returned back to the place where we were staying, this is what we saw, thank goodness. It's like a bobcat, a backhoe, and they're putting in a pipe and so on. And finally, later on that evening, they finished this up. So two of us had been seen Mount Rushmore. Here's the happy ending. We made one more trip over there. And if you want to see that. So I've seen Mount Rushmore in all conditions. 
This is just kind of fuzzy with the lights on it in the distance there. Finally, all of us saw it after about 48 hours. We saw Mount Rushmore two miles away. Okay, the scripture reading is, as I said, about Jesus talking to his disciples. And he was going to be leaving them. So he said, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you out. So Jesus' command to his disciples was to share what they saw and what they knew and what they experienced during their time with him. We have the same challenge from Jesus to us. Two things, really. First is to share the story of Jesus with other people and the story of God. The second thing is to share that story as a witness of what that's done to us and for us because people who let God in their lives are different. It changes and improves them. So, please join me for a prayer. Dear God, thank you for the witness of Jesus' disciples about what they saw and experienced. Help us to be witnesses with our lives too. And all God's children said? Amen. Okay, good. Thanks. Go up here. Hear these words from Acts. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was an earthquake, so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he was supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. The jailer called for lights, and rushing in, he fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Our gospel lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke. I want to invite you to stand for the reading of our gospel lesson. Hear these words from the gospel according to Luke. Jesus says to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He said to them, This is what is written that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and a change of heart and life for the forgiveness of sins must be preached in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of all these things. Look, I am sending you what my Father promised, but you are to stay in the city until you have been furnished with heavenly power. He led them out as far as Bethany, where he lifted his hands and blessed them, and as he blessed them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem, overwhelmed with joy. And they were continuously in the temple, praising God. May God add a blessing to our hearing and living out the word this day. You may be seated. Then he led them as far out as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, Jesus blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. She was standing in the kitchen. She had just finished washing the dishes. She picked up a tea towel and a coffee mug from the pile of clean dishes, dried it off, and then she froze. She just stood there. She didn't know where it went. Which cupboard? There were so many cupboards on the top and on the bottom. Or did it go in the drawer? She couldn't remember. This is how it started. What followed was five long years of memory loss, five years of forgetting her life, her husband, her daughter. 
her daughter who took care of her 24-7, her daughter who slept in the room next door, her daughter who bathed her so gently, who watched her mother slowly disappear, almost evaporate day by day, her daughter who watched her mother withdraw from this world. And now her mother's gone, and what is she supposed to do? How is she supposed to spend her days and evenings? What is she supposed to do now? Then he led them as far out as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew and was carried up into heaven. Carl Joseph Walker Hoover was a 16-year-old junior at New Leadership Charter School in Springfield, Massachusetts. He was a football player, cute as a button. He had come out as gay to a few friends, and then word spread. He was 16 years old when he took his own life. He killed himself because he couldn't stand the constant taunting of his classmates, bullying him, laughing at his clothes, threatening to hurt him daily. His mother had gone to the school over and over and over again, pleading and begging for them to intervene, to, to crack down. And one evening she was making dinner, and she went up to his room to call him down, and there he was, gone from the world. He withdrew from it all, from all the pain, from all the teasing, what is she supposed to do now? Her whole life gone. Her son gone. Dinner cold on the table. What is she supposed to do now? Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. Jesus was their everything. He was the one who was going to liberate Israel. He was going to be the one to take them right out from under the fist of Rome at last. They wanted to follow him everywhere, but they couldn't, you see, because the road he was walking down led to death. For three days after that cross, the disciples were widows. For three days, they were orphans. For three days, they didn't know what to do with themselves? What were they supposed to do now? But then on the third day, on the third day, Jesus rose again. He rose right up from the dead. And for 40 days, he lived with them. For 40 days, he had dinner with them and he laughed with them. For 40 days, he poured his love, showered it over them. They had him back for 40 days. Can you even imagine having a loved one back for 40 days in flesh and blood, mind and spirit, alive and well? They had him back for 40 days. And on the 40th day, he took them out as far as Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And what were they supposed to do now? Now that Jesus has withdrawn, has let himself be carried up into heaven. What do we do with those times and those places when we feel all alone? When we lose our jobs? When we lose our spouse? When we feel as if God has abandoned us? God has withdrawn from us. Where are we supposed to go? What are we supposed to do? Do we give up? Dr. Scott Hahn tells how in northwest Armenia, when a devastating earthquake hit that killed thousands of people, a distressed father ran frantically through the streets to the school where his son was, and he kept remembering what he had said. He said, no matter what, Armand, I'll always be there. So his heart sank when he rounded the corner, and he looked up, and there was the school, but there was no school. It was just a pile of rubble. And he darted towards the east corner, where he knew his son's classroom had been. And he launched into the pile of rubble and he started digging and digging and digging with his bare hands. And bystanders came by and they tried to pull him away and they said, forget it, mister. They're all dead. And he said, you can either criticize me or lift a brick. A few pitched in for a time, but the man kept digging hour after hour after hour after hour. And finally he heard a muffled groan. He pulled the board back and he cried, Armand! And from the darkness came a slight shaking voice. Papa? They found 14 of 33 students alive, and when Armand emerged, he turned to his friends and he said, See, I told you that my father wouldn't forget about us. That, my friends, is the kind of faith and hope we need because that's the kind of God we have. A God who never gives up on us, never leaves us, always reaching out to us, caring for us, 
wanting us to join in his mission to redeem the world. Our God, who is bigger than our cares, our concerns, our illnesses, our hurts, who passionately loves this world and calls us to never give up, no matter what we're going through. To never give up hope, no matter how dark the way becomes. Never give up faith. Never give up sharing and showing the love of Jesus Christ with other people. You see, this is who we are. This is the kind of community Jesus came to create, and this is who we need to be. The kind of church we need to show our community, for we are called to be a place where the brokenhearted are always comforted, where wounds are bound up and healed, where we affirm and we challenge each other, where we lead each other as far as Bethany, and then we bless one another with the Spirit's love, where we create a place where hope is nourished, where faith is nurtured, and a place where joy is contagious, for we know that we are never abandoned, and we are never forsaken. That's what we see in our reading from Acts with Paul and Silas. They had been out preaching, and they got themselves arrested. They'd been arrested, they'd been beaten, they'd been chained to a wall, thrown into a dark, dank prison. And yet... And yet, in the midst of that prison cell, instead of feeling lost, instead of feeling abandoned, they knew that God had not left them. They knew that they were not forgotten about. That in the darkest of times, that is when the light of our faith needs to shine the brightest. And so they began to sing. Joyously, triumphantly, they began to sing. And they began to live out the scripture. Rejoice always. Not when times are good, not when things are going easy. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As we gathered this morning and we celebrated the absolute joy of Milo's baptism, I hope you heard and I hope you know that when we participate together in this sacrament, what is being said to all of us is this. You are God's beloved. God is so well pleased with you. If you ever feel as if God has abandoned you, come into this place. If you ever feel as if God has withdrawn from you, that God has left you all alone, come and sing with us, pray with us, eat with us, discern with us. The good news of the gospel that we rejoice in always is that God is as close as the person sitting next to you, as close as the water on a little one's forehead, as close as a prayer lifted up long after that person has left you, is as close as the breath in your lungs that you're breathing right now, as close as the lifeblood pumping through all of our veins. That is how close God is, and that is the joy the challenge and joy of being the body of Christ that those disciples experienced as Jesus departed them and left them with such a tremendous gift of joy. The joy was in believing and knowing that God has not and God never will abandon us. God has given us and called us to be a community of love and blessing, a community of justice and of joy. It is a place for someone who's never set foot in church, and yet when they come, we make them feel as if they've been with us forever. It is a place for everyone. As our welcoming statement boldly boldly proclaims, this is a place for every race, every sexual orientation, every nationality, everyone to come, vividly, tangibly sense that he or she is God's beloved, a child of God, with whom God is well pleased. And we need to reach out to those. This is the calling we have in our hearts. We who know this joy, we who know this great gift, we've been given this calling to reach out to those that may feel like they are forgotten. And you may know people like that, people who feel they are forgotten, that they've been abandoned, that, they, that, that there's nowhere and no one who cares, like the two people I began my message with. Well, we care, right? We care. We boldly stand up today and we say we care, and we need to show that care. We need to show that love and show that hope to all people, 
all of God's children who need to see it and feel it and experience in us is the body of Christ through all of our many, many ministries. Jesus led them as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed them with a comforter. He blessed them with an advocate. He blessed them with the Holy Spirit that side by side moves us outward to be a blessing to the world, to be in ministry with everyone, all God's children, as we care for and pray for and carry each other up into heaven every day. My friends, if you hear nothing else this morning, hear this. We are God's beloved. And we are meant to share that. Not just know it, but we're meant to feel it in our hearts and we're meant to share that with the world. If we ever feel as if God has abandoned us, or if we ever find others who are feeling adrift on the path of life, come. Come into this place of joy. Invite others to join you. Sing with us, pray with us, eat with us, be with us, and bless us. Bless us. Bless us. Almighty God, who never forgets us. Amen. Amen. And so this God who never forgets us gives us a peace that passes all understanding. And so let us stand and sing in response as we sing, I've got peace like a river. Amen. So please be seated as we join in a time of prayer. I'll lift up our prayers and invite you to respond, Lord, hear our prayer. And so we begin with a prayer. Uh, please pray that Bob Kiddo may come home soon, very soon. Thanks for all the prayers um, that you have said for us. It is such a joy that Lois is here with us. Lois Kiddo is here with us. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we do pray for healing and strength for Bob. Hear our prayer. Uh, prayers for my children, a young man that they are related to was brutally killed this last week. And so we pray for this family in the midst of that loss. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, prayers of thanksgiving for a successful pacemaker procedure. Thank you, everyone, for keeping us in their prayers. And this is from Lydia, who's here. And so we lift, we lift that up this morning. Lord, hear our prayer. Continued prayers for Ken's sister Priscilla and her husband who are going through a rough time. And so we lift them to our in prayer this morning. Lord, hear our prayer. Thanks to all who worked on uh, outside the church on the cleanup last Thursday. It looks absolutely beautiful cleaning that up. And so we lift that joy up for many hands that made light work and made it look very beautiful. <laughs> so we lift that up in joy. Lord, hear our prayer. Um, and this is a prayer from Althea, from my brother-in-law, Ross, struggling with a health condition. And so we lift him up in, to our prayer and our concern. Lord, hear our prayer. 
Do you have other prayers this morning, other joys of your heart or concerns that you have? I'll come around and give you the mic. There you go, Bob. It's me again. <laughs> I have a friend from college who lives in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I heard from her last night, 30 families from her church have lost everything in the Arkansas River flooding. And I know there's thousands of others experiencing the same. So a prayer this morning for all those families around our country devastated, losing so much in the flooding and the storms that are besieging them. We lift them in prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Other uh, prayers. Yeah, Charlie, she's got you right there. Oh, and I will celebrate 59 years of marriage Wednesday. All right. <laughs> For the great joy, 59 years of marriage. Lepet the God, Lord. Here are our prayer. And Judy, right here. And we're celebrating 49 years on Thursday. All right, 49 years. All right. It's a great joy as well. Other, oh. Okay, um, I know you're all going to be sad at this. Uh, I won't be here next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go see my princess granddaughter in her dance recital in Sheboygan. So I will be gone. So I want to remind you that Midler Senior Luncheon is coming up and it's going to be a good one because I've found a lot of good recipes and you need to sign up because I like to make food. <laughs> So, all right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> other joys, other concerns, other things on your heart to lift up. Oh, way in the back. <laughs> yeah, our daughter, uh, Shannon, graduated from college this last uh, two weeks ago. And this coming weekend, we're going to be helping her move over to Traverse City uh, to be with her brother and sister-in-law. So we pray for safe travel and, and for her for the future. All right. So prayers for safe travel and prayers for her in this new chapter of life. Lord, hear our prayer. Other prayers? Other joys or concerns? All right. Well, with these, oh, those that you have named and those in our hearts, Let's be in prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks for this time to come, for this community to be a part of, this place where all are welcomed and received. As we come to be reminded again of your constant loving presence that is with us in our lives. Yes, this can be a tough world, and there's tough times that we go through, times when we feel apart from you, times when we feel lonely and afraid, times when we may even feel like we have been abandoned. But yet, O oh Lord, you are there with your hands lifted, blessing us, pouring your spirit out upon us. We pray this morning, O oh God, as we pray for all the people who have been lifted up in our prayers, those with health issues, those in assisted living centers and hospitals, those who are struggling in grief, those who are struggling in, in tough places of life with mental illnesses or addiction, those struggling in tough places of flooding and places of violence. Into all these situations, oh God, your light, your grace, your hope shines brightly and is there. May all these people see this and feel it. May we, as the body of Christ, share it as we share your light, your love, and hope as we come with eyes open and hearts open to give thanks for all our many blessings, the blessings of anniversaries and the blessings of new chapters of life through graduation, the, the blessings of family and friends that journey with us, the blessings of our church family, as we welcome little Milo into our midst and pray for him and his family. And most of all, the blessing of your son, Jesus Christ who came to be one with us, one of us who knows our hurts and our pains and our, and our struggles and walks with us and calls us by name and, 
and is there with us, holding us up, lifting us up, who died for our sake, who rose for our sake, who offers us the gift of abundant and eternal life. What a tremendous gift and a tremendous joy we are filled with this day. Oh Lord, we come with these prayers on our heart and we lift them all to your care, to your concern. In the name of Christ, amen. The Coins of Compassion offering for June is in support of Project Fresh Clothes. Paper money and checks may be placed in the envelopes marked Loose Coin Offering, found in the racks on the backs of the pews. Funds collected will help provide vouchers for students to use at selected consignment shops to purchase new school clothing. We have been given bountiful gifts. Let us offer these gifts in gratitude and love so they may be used for God's work in the world. With joy in our hearts, let us welcome the ushers. I invite us to pray. <clears throat> oh Lord, thank you for all the ways you move in and through our lives, all the ways you bless us as we this day enjoy and love, open our hands and hearts to give back to you. We pray your blessing upon all these gifts that are given. Let them nourish our ministries as we continue to reach out far beyond the walls of this building, out into this community and into this world, to freely share your grace, your hope, your love, so that all may know that they are not forgotten, and they are not alone, but yet you are with us. 
In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So what a joy on this Sunday when we talk of God's constant presence that we get two sacraments, not one but two, to remind us of that. The sacrament of baptism and our sacrament of communion. I invite us to be in an attitude of prayer as we come to bless our elements this morning. Almighty God, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your presence is constantly with all your people of this world. Out of your great and gracious love for this world, you came and dwelt among us as one of us, taking the hard path to bring good news to the poor, to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to share the table with all your people who are welcome, teaching the way that leads to an abundant eternal life as we accept you. By your incarnation, life, suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You've delivered us, made covenant with us by water and the Spirit. When the time arrived for Jesus to give himself up for us, when all had been prepared, he shared his last meal with his friends, where he took the one loaf, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to them. He said, take and eat, for this is my body given for you, so that you may be my body for this world my hands and my feet and my heart, as people experience me through you and your witness. And when the meal was finished, he took the cup and he blessed it. And he said, drink of this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, that you may be a people of forgiveness, a people of reconciliation, a people of mercy. And so, Almighty God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, we come to be nourished and led once again by the Spirit as we join in that prayer that shapes us and forms us as we pray together with one voice and heart, our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom. I want to invite up those who have uh, chosen to serve this morning.
Our table is prepared for all of you. You do not have to be a member of this local church or this denomination as God's love and grace and hope was poured forth freely to the world. So forth is it, so is it poured forth through this sacrament of grace that is given to us. I invite you to come and take the bread. You can eat it right away. Take the cup and drink it and you can place it in one of the receptacles around the sanctuary. I invite you to come receive this great gift offered to us all. If you have issues with the bread, I'm the one with the gluten-free. So.
I invite you to stand for our prayer. And standing as we sing our closing hymn to send us forth. Let us pray. Oh God, what an absolute joy it is. And what a joy we feel to come to this table where all are welcomed and received. To be reminded again of your presence in our lives. No matter what we're going through or what we're facing. To know, oh Lord, that you are with us. To feel your hand upon our shoulders. To feel you nourishing us to feel your spirit that guides us and leads us each and every day. May we be filled with your hope, filled with your peace, and filled with your joy to overflowing, that we may go and share this freely and abundantly and extravagantly with the world around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's join in our closing hymn, Rejoice, Ye Pure in Heart. And so go forward this day rejoicing, rejoicing in all the ways that God is with us in and through our lives. Let us go in hope and let us go in peace. Amen.